All right, welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number 19. And today we're gonna go over a new feature. I think it was pushed out a couple builds ago for Valence 6, which is adding directions to your uh, map widget in uh, Nitro App Builder. And then also after that, we'll show integrating the IFS uh, viewer into your Nitro App Builder. So if you want to view a file on the IFS uh, within your uh, Nitro App Builder app, you can do so. So I'm going to share my screen. And if anybody has any questions um, during this, since we are live right now, uh, please just put it in the chat. Okay. And I'm gonna log in real quick. Okay, so we're gonna simply just create, I have a data source, an SQL based one um, that I'm gonna create, um, which is gonna mimic a file that has some, let's say, uh, locations or stops. Um, so let me just bring that in. Now, normally you would be going against your, uh, an actual table on your IBMI. Um, here we just have, we're just cre creating a temp table that just has some uh, locations. So we have a name, an address, city, state, zip. And then I added this step <clears throat> one, two, three, it's just an ID and it's ordered by step. And the reason for that is the map will show the directions based on the order of records it receives from your data source. So um, first, second, third, fourth. So order does matter, especially if you have some kind of routing or path for, for directions. So I'm just going to preview this data source make sure it looks good. And it does. So we see these four locations or stops that we're going to have for our, our route. I'm just going to call this route. And I'm going to say DD19. Okay, now that we have our uh, data source, I'm going to just go to, uh, there we go. It's just so we see what we're working with today. And we're going to create our widget. And that'll be a map widget. And we've talked about the map widget before, I believe, on, in developer diaries. Um, but I'll just quickly, just for the address format, um, it's the same thing as if you were um, using Google Maps in the browser on your phone, um, the address format it's expecting. So just as you were typing in to find a location. So we're going to say address, city, state, and zip. Okay. And right now it's just set to one marker. It's seeing our first record from our data source. Um, here, just so you know, if you have many stops um, for your, 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 let's say transfer um, on seeing those directions, you're gonna maybe wanna change the maximum markers. By default, set to 10. Um, I believe we'll go all the way up to 500, but um, that'd be a pretty intense route. <clears throat> And then in the UI, this is where the updates are, the changes have been made. So now we have this section for directions. So do you wanna have directions? And if so, what type of direction? Just like if you were in Google Maps. So we're gonna say driving, okay? I'm just gonna let it paint itself. And now that we said that while we're in the designer mode of the widget itself, it says, okay, well, I'm not gonna limit it to one marker anymore. I'm gonna limit it to up to three, just so you can see it. So we can kind of see it. We have more than three in our data source, but it's just showing the three. And then we can say, yeah, let's uh, include direction steps and we'll show what that's gonna look like. So now not only do we see the, our route based on first record, second record, third record of the data source, we also get the directions from Google, okay? The driving directions. We can set those to be by default collapsed. So, and I'm gonna do that. 
So by default, it's still there. You know, the user just has to expand it to see it if they want. And so that's it for that. I'm going to save this widget. Route map. And 19. Okay, let's just put this into an application. So we're going to go create a new application and we're going to pick our map that we just created. I'm going to give it a title, just route. <clears throat> and um, yeah, that's it. Let's just, let's just save that for right now. We'll come back to the next piece. And I'm going to put this, this is going to be for part two of integrating with the IFS file viewer. I'm going to add this to it also to a group called shipping. All right, let's go to the launch pad. We should see our route. Okay, and now we see our four locations. And if we remember, we'll go quickly go back here. You know, our route had four records. And we're seeing those four. One, two, three, four. And then we have the directions here for the user if they want to. And they're just broken up just like you would normally see. So we have our first step, driving direction, second, third, and then ending in four. Okay. All right. If there's no questions on that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'll do one quick overview one more time. It's just based on your, your database, the records that come in first, first in is your first step, second, third, fourth. If for some reason you turn on directions for the map and it only receives one locate, one record for uh, plotting on the map, it won't show the directions. You have to at least have two or more. And then we'll just quickly go over this. In the data section or the UI section, which was updated, it's simply just saying, okay, you do wanna show directions, what type of direction you want. And if you wanna include the steps, cause you might not wanna include the direction steps. You might just wanna do it for visual UI on the map and that's it. So you can turn that on and off. All right, let me check, see if there's any questions. I don't see any, perfect. Okay, so the next thing was we have the IFS Explorer. And this is a way for you to interact with your IFS, um, but we've had requests to be able to view files on the IFS within a Nitro App Builder app. And it will be only for view, uh, view only. It will not be, the user wouldn't be able to edit or anything like that, the, the file itself. Um, now, if you're talking about viewing a image, then there's no need to use the IFS Explorer. You can just simply do that with your um, URL viewer, because the URL viewer is uh, an iframe, and then I'll paint the image or PDF just fine. But if you have something like an XML document that is specific to, uh, on your system, specific to that application, like in ours, we're just mimicking like an order, okay? Um, we wanna see that file within the application. So I'm going to, hold on, I just saw there's a chat. Okay, so somebody just asked about the Google Maps providing uh, the Google token, which is really a key. Uh, Bill, yeah, you, by default, when, you're, when you apply your permanent key, you have to, uh, for valence, you, you will need to add, get your own key from Google. We do have, and let me go to that. If I go to the guides. All right, just click the guides, and I believe if I find it, App Builder, widgets, map, here we go. We do have a section about creating your Google key. Now, by default, that is free from Google with limitations. And I don't remember the daily count of requests that you get a day for free, or if it's by month. Um, but if you don't hit that limit, you don't need to do anything. If you do, then you would need to to, to look into um, 
their the purchasing part of with Google. But for any locations we pull on the map, we try to help so you won't hit that number. So what we do is if it's the first time you're going after um, this address, city, state, zip, and we don't have it in a file on the back end, we'll go to Google, get the information so we can plot it on the map, and then we save that on the back end within Valence. So next time we, fi we find that you're looking for that same location, we won't waste a call to Google and use up that count for the free key. We'll just, we already stored it, we cached it on the system. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Bill. And let me go back to Wales. Okay. So IFS viewer, Explorer, I mean, uh, you know, working with files on the IFS. And we wanna bring that into a Nitro App Builder app. And we'll do it with the app we just created. So let's go to our apps, route. And for this, I'm just saying that when the user clicks a marker on the map, we wanna show the corresponding uh, XML document for its shipment, okay? So first I'm going to add a widget and I'm gonna go to utility widgets. And we've talked about these in the past in developer diaries, but we're gonna use the URL widget, which I'm gonna first label it. Order info. Okay, and I'm gonna put it up. I want it to be on the right side of the map when they click it. And I don't want that left margin. Okay, <clears throat> and you know what? I forgot to put, we want it initially hidden because by default, it won't have a value until they click a marker. So we want it initially hidden. Uh, Johnny, sorry to interrupt. You're not sharing your screen. We see your image oh. on the screen, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, stop video. It shows I'm showing video and sharing screen. You don't see the screen at all? No, I see your face. Oh, that's odd. Um, that's not. Do you see it now? Now it's okay. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to start over then. I don't yes, know. Please, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So we're going to add, I'm, I'm reverting back because uh, the video stopped showing. I guess my face was on there. Sorry. Um, we're now going to introduce the IFS Explorer into the app that we recently just created, the route app. And first we want to add a widget and we're going to go to utility widgets, which is, and we're going to pick the URL widget, which is something we've already talked about in the past. Um, it, uh, let me just put here order, order info. This really is just, it's an, uh, think of it as like a, a it's a, a, technically it's an iframe running within your application. So it's just like a browser tab. Okay. Um, we're going to want this to the right of our map. And I want to clean up the margin. And I want to make it initially hidden because by default, we're not going to load this widget until they click a marker on the map. So each time they click the marker on the map, we want this to show an XML document, which is the order information for the shipment for this location on the map. All right. So now that we have the widget in place, now we have to go into behaviors and, and, and hook it up. So we're gonna go to behaviors. And under the map widget, we have this marker click event, which that's what we wanna use. And when the user clicks the marker, what do we wanna do? Well. We actually want to link a URL widget and we only have one. So it, it, Nitro App Builder will only show us URL widgets that we have in the app and we only have one, it's just order info. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna paste something in here and then we'll talk about it real quick. So this is just a URL, okay? And for the source editor, we know what the URL is because that's actually defined in the app record. So if we went into admin, and we searched IFS, you're going to see the path. So build production source editor index.html. Okay. 
and I have that same path, build, production, source editor, index.html. Now there's some other things that we're passing with it, which I'm gonna talk about. So the app, we always need to pass an app ID within the portal. This app ID is not the same app ID as, so this one is 1002. And if we go back to portal admin, this app record is 86. The reason why it's not the same app ID is because I actually, prior to the developer diaries, I copied this, okay? So uh, I copied it and called it file viewer. So I just did a copy of the existing record for IFS Explorer. And I did that for one reason, one reason only. If you're gonna allow this in your Nitro App Builder app for your users, you pr probably don't want them to see the IFS Explorer as an app on the launch pad where they can launch it and do things, right? So I copied it, I called it file viewer. And the only thing I did change was I went into groups and I added a group of shipping group. And that's what my user belongs to. They only belong to shipping group. And the last thing that I did was I went to categories and then <clears throat> placed it into a hidden category. So this category is hidden, okay? So when we load it, it won't show on the launch pad, but we'll be able to use it within um, the portal, okay? So that is why that ID is not the same. So that's just a recommendation. I mean, you could just say, use the app ID of Nitro IFS Explorer. And then if they have it, you know, you get it, or you can move that into a hidden category, but you as a developer might need it. So you'd never want it in a hidden category. Auto logout false. This is needed for valence applications. So it knows that when it's being destroyed, that we shouldn't attempt to do an auto logout. Um, so that's just a flag that we that is must need is is needed on our apps if you're going to use them within your your um, Nitro App Builder apps. And then title. So title is the bar within the IFS Explorer. I think it usually just says Nitro IFS Explorer. You're telling it to override the title to whatever you want. So I just typed in order info. And of course you could put you know data dynamically based off of what they clicked from here. And the last thing that's really important, the most important part of it is path. So this is the path to the file that you want Nitro um, IFS Explorer to open for the user. So prior to this, directly in V Diary 6, we have a temp folder and I just threw a few XML documents in there, okay? And I call them step one, two, three, and four. So if I go back to App Builder, you're going to see that. So my path is V Diaries dash six, temp, step, and then I'm bringing in the step from when they clicked because it's going to be one, two, three, or four dot XML. Um, so I'm going to save that. And I'm seeing the chat pop up, so I'm just gonna take a look. Okay, it was just about the screen stuff. Okay, great. Um, yeah, if any, if any, if my screen goes off again, please tell me. Okay, so now that we've saved that, I'm gonna save this and I'm going to save the app. I'm gonna go back to our application and then I simply reload the frame. Okay, so we see our map just like we did before, nothing different, but now I'm gonna click on a marker and you see that now the title, this is Nitro IF Explorer. It's what, you know, we just overrode the title and then here's the file directly that we chose to choose, we, we, we brought in based off of that path. So since I clicked a record that had a step ID of one, it then said, okay, step 
bring in the ID of one.xml and brought it in. So if I clicked on two, it's going to load it, do the same thing. There's CNX's order. I click on three. Another order. And then the last one. And that's, yeah, that's it. So if you do want to bring in files uh, for view only within um, your Nitro App Builder app, especially files that might be like source related, like XML or something like that, you can do it with the IFX Explorer, bringing it in. And I think I just saw a chat. So let me check that. Okay, there's a question theory. Uh, does a path need to be open somewhere in Apache config? Also didn't accept X when I had to rename it to text. Uh, also, I'm not sure about did not accept. So yeah, it's gonna have to be open. Like whatever you're bringing in, it would need to be accessible um, for us to be able to access it. Um, I know that our files like on the IFS for valence are automatically accessible, so that's fine. Um, I made use of your, but I had to move my XML file, you know, folder under the valence portal. Yeah. So I would say if it's, if it's not available, then you might need to open that up. Um, I'd have to see and test because since we're in, I'm taking that back. Since we're in the IFS Explorer, you should be able to open up any file that's on the IFS. So if you have a, uh, I guess if you want to send us an email or something like that of, of, of a scenario that it wasn't working for you. Um, I guess the other question would be theory is that if you go directly into the app, the IFS Explorer, can you drill into the uh, IFS and open that XML document? If you can, I'm almost convinced maybe that just the path wasn't set correctly because it's using the same application. It's just, it's embedded in a nav app. So you shouldn't need to do anything. Oh, you were using your old, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, if you're using, okay, so Theory's, sorry. So Theory was asking, he wasn't using the IFS Explorer. He was just using the URL viewer. And yes, if you're using just the URL viewer and you're attempting to open something up, you, you, Apache needs to, it needs to be accessible through Apache. Now, if with using Nitro, uh, IFS Explorer within your Nitro App Builder app, you wouldn't have to touch the Apache config at all to expose this file, wherever it is on your IFS. All right, I think theory, I hope, hopefully I answer your question. Um, and yeah, you, okay, good, I did, all right. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're, I would say if you're, if you're trying to show any type of technical documents, JSON, XML, anything like that, you definitely probably would want to use the IFS Explorer within NAB and not use the URL viewer. However, with that said, if you're showing a, if you're just displaying an image, a PDF, you would just use the URL viewer and not bother with the IFS Explorer. It's just, you're just adding more uh, levels of complexity. Is the IFS Explorer formatting the XML? It will format. I, I believe the IF, <clears throat> I, sorry, Theory just asked a question. Does the IF, uh, IFS Explorer format XML? I believe it does uh, beautify XML. All right. Well, I think that's it. Um, so we went over the map with the new directions added recently, and then bringing in IFS Explorer into your NAB application. And if there's no other questions, I think that's it for our uh, Developer Diaries session 19. All right, everybody. Well, everybody have a good weekend and we'll see you next time.